Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're going to be looking at how you can create soft body clots, you know, those kind of things directly here in Motion Builder. So Motion Builder is one of those amazing tools that you make use of for creating or for retargeting uh, motions from one character to another. It's actually like the best motion capture or motion data editing tool. So you can also create animations from here and you can export them. And at the same time, you can also retarget animations from one character to another. But there is actually something that has to do with, you know, soft body, rigid body, all of those things that a lot of people don't really get or don't really know how to do. So we're going to go through and look at it. Not long ago, we covered a video that had to do with rigid body dynamics and how you can actually simulate things like rigid body, you know, based on weight and all that. So this is a follow up of that video. So just in case you don't or you haven't seen that video, you can go ahead and actually take a look at it. So for today's video, I'm going to start with something very, very simple. So I'm going to use a simple polysphere. So we're just going to go ahead and drop that there and let's scale this just a little bit like that. Okay. Now, next thing that we need to do is definitely bring in the physics solver, of course. And also we're going to go over to the physics property, but this time we're not selecting either the rigid body or the ragdoll. We're going to select physics X. And by selecting physics X, by selecting physics X, we need to actually select the soft body, click, drag, and drop on top of the model that we want these, you know, solver to actually work on. So once we have this ready, you would notice that once I come over here, where I have the solver, double click on, you know, physics solver, select online, you get to get you you get to see this message that says soft body is not supported by ODE 0.1. All right, so now that we have this offline, what we need to do is just to make sure that we have physics solver selected, and we'll go over here where we have properties. All right, now within the property, you're going to notice that we we'll have the ODE 0.11 here. All we have to do is turn this off and select physics 2.8. So you may now understand that from here, the physics solver actually makes use of this, all right? So you need to make sure that you, I mean, the physics engine, I mean, you need to make sure that you have this physics engine before you can actually, you know, take advantage of these things here. So now that we have that ready to go, what we can do now is we can choose to actually put something. So let me just go ahead and raise this a little bit upwards. So you can choose to put something here that should act like a collider, depending on what you want. Or, you know, you can, you know, just leave it the way it is. And of course, the floor is going to be an automatic collider. So if I turn this on right now, you're going to see recording is here and I can choose to make this the state where it should stay. Always make sure that you set your start state. So I'm setting here as the start state. And now if I click live, you're going to notice that it's bouncing on the floor. Now, if I also go back and choose to reset this back to the start state. So if I uh, turn this off, it goes back to the start state or the state which it was before. I can also choose, all right, I can also choose to pick up the clot and drop clot directly onto this model. So now I have the clot dropped onto that model. I can come through, um, make sure I have this and I'm going to go ahead and just simply delete this one. So now we have the clot there. I will come over here, turn this on one more time and live this and you can see we have that clot view happening directly there. Now for you to be able to constrain the clot is something I think it's possible, but I don't really know how you can do that right now. But I think if you have a rigged object, you can select a certain mesh that has to do with that rigged object. I mean, if that object is bound to a joint, then you can use that as, uh, let's say, you know, like an attached constraint. All right. So I think you can do something like that. All right. So let's turn this off and let's try this with a character. So we are going to go ahead, go over to the pre-visualization. Let's just make sure that we have a brand new stuff, uh, I think. Okay, so we're going to get a brand new stuff and just drag in a character directly here. So we don't need this character to have any form of animation. All right, so I just need only the mesh. So this mesh, we just want to play with it, right? Of course, this would have an animation, but we loaded it without animation 
all right so i can come here all right let's go back i can come here and just try to play with something a bit more crazy than it was before and i can actually pick up cloth drop this on top of that come back to this section select the solver so one more time so that you guys can see select the solver switch this to the physics solver now you might be seeing the hik is the hik solver that has to do with this bone definition that you have here so since we're not using it of course then we might actually just go ahead and delete it since we don't you know we don't need it for anything all right so now i have this ready i can make sure that this is turned to live and you can see it goes into the t pose because we don't actually make use of the hik since there's no animation running and i can just simply turn this to live and so if i turn this to live you can see our character just falls into shreds all right so let's restart this and you can have something like that all right so it's quite uh, something interesting. I mean, if you want to actually decimate the character, you can actually go ahead and do this. I don't know what use case will, you guys will find this appealing. But yeah, this is exactly how you can go ahead and play with Softbody and Clot directly in Motion Builder. Motion Builder is a great app and I think you guys would definitely find it interesting while working with it and creating, you know, interesting, interesting content. This is about it. This is how you can go around, you know, play with these things and create very interesting stuff. I would like to know what you guys think about this. What is your own use case for something like this? Probably you're into pre-visualization, probably you're learning motion builder right now and you just want to create cloth for some reason. Then of course, I guess this is also a good way for you to actually get it started. Of course, you can come through here and actually record this to the story so that you can have it playing directly on your viewport. But either ways, depending on what you want to create, you can just go through and, and you know, do all of these things. And tell me what you guys think about this. If you learned something from this, go ahead and give it a like. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing if you can hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so you don't miss the next video or the next episode. And until I see you guys again with a tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.